makers of better things for better living through chemistry. Nearly everything in our daily lives is improved by chemistry. From transportation to the clothes we wear, chemistry helps bring us better food, makes our homes more beautiful, more comfortable, helps protect our health, and adds to the enjoyment of our leisure time. Now, tonight's story on the DuPont Theater. may hit lakeside today. Well, did I predict rain, too? No, but it might. Well, why don't you wear a steel helmet? A chimney might fall on your head, too. Not a mine, Bernie. I avoid old buildings. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm afraid you're going to live forever. Oh, you don't have to look. You're right on the dock, just like always. The only punctual newspaper man in captivity. You're here, too. Yeah, but I was early, see? I couldn't sleep last night. I'm unpredictable. I'm, I'm unreliable. I'm people. That, I take it, makes me some kind of a monster. Oh, no, Bob. Heavens, no. Monsters are alive. You're a nice head of crisp, leafy lettuce. Will you please stop that? Robert Lawrence, you are a vegetable. Here I am after a night of insomnia, heartburning, headachey, trying to pick a fight with you, a nice, simple human fight, and you won't even get mad. Sane people don't fight, Bernie. Oh, I feel the need of a cup of coffee, hot, black, and bitter. And please, don't join me. Well, you know I don't drink coffee, Bernie. Oh, of course, how stupid of me. You don't drink at all. As a matter of fact, I don't even think you eat. You just get hold and sprinkled. Good morning, Bernie. What's eating him? He got mad because I didn't. He always wants to pick a fight with me. With you? He's an optimist. Are we alone? Yes, why? Darling. Joan. Sweetheart, now, just this now, once, now, please. It's a very now, special occasion. Joan. Happy birthday. Oh, that. And even if you are getting to be an old man, I still love you. And I have a token of my love. You didn't go and buy me a present. No, this isn't a present. This is Estella. <laughs> and since you're a lonesome old bachelor, I thought you might want some companionship. Isn't she wonderful? She's very cute. It's a spaniel, isn't it? Cocker spaniel. Well, thanks very much, but I don't want her. Why not? You said you had one just like it when you were a kid, didn't you? Well, that's just the point. She got run over and was killed. Well, now you can have her back. No. No, they start wagging their tails and licking your hand, and you grow fond of them, and then one day you find them dead. Oh, I see. Now, once you commit yourself, you're certain to get hurt. No, it's better to be alone. Yes. Alone and safe. No love, no more heartbreaks, eh? All right, then. I'll keep her myself. I'm sorry, Joan. I didn't mean to hurt you. You wouldn't hurt me or, or anybody. Or love me or anybody. Well, that isn't true. You know how I feel about you. No, I don't. You never say anything. What do you want me to say? Oh, silly things. Exaggerated, phony, romantic things like, I adore you, Joan. Will you marry me, Joan? You know how I dislike rituals. Why can't you let things work themselves out, little by little? Like developing into man and wife, little by little. You're becoming unnecessarily sarcastic, Joan, but I understand. And you forgive, too. You can't even get mad. It'd be too risky, like falling in love with me or a puppy. It just wouldn't be safe. Be reasonable, Joan. I don't want to be. I want to be insane. I want to be able to say I, I love you when I feel like it and, and go jump in the lake if that's the way I feel. 
And that is precisely the way I do feel right now. You can tell the boss I am taking the day off. And if he doesn't like it, he can go jump in the lake with you. and then all the kids in the neighborhood got into it. They're throwing rocks again. Go out and give them a hand, Fitzpatrick. I'm going to make today's edition. I better call the newspaper. Do you mind if I use your phone, Sergeant? Uh, help yourself. Hello, Bernie. This is Bob. Yes, it's still going on. Well, I'll give it to you. A serious, but as yet unexplainable, fight broke out this afternoon among a group of teenage boys. You all right, Lawrence? called me and I tried to reach you to the hospital in your apartment. Does it hurt? No. It... Oh, I just feel funny. That's... I'll get you some water. No, no, I don't care for any. Bob, you look so strange. John, you didn't hear what the doctor said. He said I could have been killed. Just a half inch more and I could have been killed. But you weren't killed. Yes, but you don't understand. All my life I've... I believed in a certain kind of justice, that you get what you deserve. And I've lived accordingly. I don't deserve this. Of course not. But I could have been killed, me, an innocent bystander. Why? It was only an accident, Bob. If accidents like that can happen, then fate is nothing but a stupid, idiotic... Please, let me take you home. No, I don't want to go home. I want to look into this. Into what? You're not well, Bob. Those kids, you should have seen them beaten up and bloody. One minute they're playing games, and the next minute they're fighting, full of hatred. Where did it come from? I'm gonna go find out. Where are you going? Back to the empty lot. Well, don't look at me as if I were crazy. Just think of me as a reporter out on an assignment. I'm gonna track down this sudden outburst of violence to its source. I'm going with you. No, I'm gonna do this alone. I could have been killed. I'm gonna find out just who or what tried to kill me. Well, here's the names of the kids that were in here. And if I were you, I wouldn't waste my time on them. You know what you'll find. No, I don't. The kids will be kids. That's the reason they fight. Well, maybe so. Thanks anyway. Sure, I know what started the fight. It was on account of the football. We were playing nice. This guy's from Elmwood High. And, well, I threw a long forward pass to Frog. And Frog? We called that on account of the croaks. Then this little creep intercepted it. What little creep? Just a little kid. We don't even know him. He wasn't playing or anything. He just dashed in like crazy, grabbed the ball, ran, and then dropped it. Only there wasn't no football anymore, just a pancake. That creep slashed it with a kitchen knife. Kitchen knife? What was he doing with a kitchen knife? Slashed our football. What else? The frog caught him and socked him one. It was a beaut. Well, it's a little rough, don't you think, hitting a little kid? That football was brand new, mister. Frog sold a billion copies of your paper to get it. I see. What's the name of this little boy? Pete somebody. I don't know. He lives over there on 3rd. It's a great house behind an old empty store. OK, thanks a lot. Say, mister, when they stitched that thing up, did it hurt? Yeah. Pete. I don't know. 
don't know you. Yeah, but I know you. You're the one who uh, slashed the football, aren't you? And they say you just grabbed it and flat as a pancake. <laughs> Why'd you do it, Pete? Because? That's why. Were you mad at those boys? Were you mad at somebody else? He hit me. And I didn't do nothing. Who hit you, Pete? My pa. He threw a bowl of soup at me. Mama, don't cry, Pete. Most things happen sometimes. Tell me, Pete, what'd your dad do? He's a fix-it man. He can work real good and he fixes motors and electric razors and things in our garage. I see. Well, tell me, why was he angry with you today? It's my birthday today, and he promised me a new baseball bat. We were waiting for him, me and my mom. You think it'll be a real one, like the major leaguers? I don't know, Pete. Depends on how much money he's got. You think he'll bring me a mitt, too? Oh, Pete. My next birthday, maybe. Your dad's home. your soup. Don't slurp. If it's too hot, wait. Stop that nonsense. I told you to wait. it up and slashed it. Where's your dad now, Pete? In there. Well, let's go in, hmm? I don't want to. Okay. No, uh, I didn't throw the soup. It, it got spilled when I blew up. But you were mad at him, Mr. Sergeant. Well, not at him, I guess. At the whole world. Well, what made you mad? Mr. Hewitt, you know, the barber down on Main Street. Sure, I know him. He's a very nice man. Oh, not today he wasn't. I don't know what get into him, but he treated me like I was a beggar or something. I've been working for him for years, adjusting clippers, sharpening scissors. Today was the day for my pickup. Yeah, here. Here, Sergeant. See what you can do with these. Just break them. That's all I need. Just break them. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Hewitt. I'll bring them back tomorrow. Okay, okay. Uh, Mr. Hewitt. Well, what is it? Well, I, I was just wondering. Uh, what about? Come on, man. I haven't got all day. Well, I was wondering if you could let me have $10 now. I'm losing my customers. My help leaves me. My business is falling apart. And you push me against the wall for a touch. Well, this ain't no touch. I do good work. I do it cheap. I'm only asking for an advance. I don't care what you call it. I got no funds for charity. I ain't no beggar, Mr. Hewitt. I just plain don't understand what got into him. Hurt, Mr. Sergeant. From him it got into you, and from you into Pete, and from Pete into the other boys, and from the other boys into a flying rock. But you didn't get mad. I don't believe in turning my hurt into hatred. 
But I may make an exception when I find the man who started this. <laughs> you may have to go back to Adam, Mr. Lawrence. Yes, Mr. Sergeant. I may. <laughs> We will return to our play right after tonight's story of DuPont Chemistry. Hello, darling. Hi. Dinner ready? No, but I just have to heat it up, and the water's already boiling. That's dinner? It's the main course. Meatballs and gravy. Honey, I know cellophane is great, but you can't put it in boiling water. It's not cellophane, dear. It's a new kind of packaging film. Mylar. Now hurry up. Dinner be ready in a few minutes. The lady is right. Dinner will be ready in a few minutes because it's pre-cooked by the manufacturer. And it comes in a new kind of package made with Mylar polyester film, a remarkable development of DuPont chemical research. Mylar is sparkling clear, like cellophane, but it has special properties. For instance, Mylar can resist temperatures up to 90 degrees above the boiling point of water. And since the film is unaffected by the abrupt change from freezer compartment to boiling water, food can be heated right in the package. Then the bag is snipped open and the food served right onto the plate. There are no messy pots and pans to clean. This new idea in kitchen convenience is just starting to become a reality, but you'll be seeing more and more of it in the future. Another important advantage of Mylar is its fantastic strength. Actually, one-third as strong as some high-grade steel. This makes it ideal for extra tough packaging jobs like pruning shears or for children's toys because Mylar resists tearing and puncturing in handling and storage. Of course, only the toughest packaging jobs need a film as tough as Mylar. Most manufacturers solve their problems with one of the 60 different varieties of cellophane that DuPont manufactures. They may all look alike, but each is designed for a special job. For instance, foods that need extra protection against moisture are getting it from a new DuPont cellophane with a special coating. DuPont calls it K-type cellophane. It keeps cookies crisp and tasty, retains the natural oil in these cashew nuts, helps these candies stay chewy. Every day in this DuPont laboratory, work goes on to help manufacturers find new and better ways of getting their products to you fresh, clean, and conveniently packaged. This small-scale supermarket in the laboratory, for example, gives DuPont technicians a chance to see how cellophane packaging from meats and produce stands up under actual store conditions and to study ways of improving it. This continuing research helps DuPont customers bring you many things packaged better in films like cellophane and mylar. Two more of DuPont's better things for better living through chemistry. And now back to the DuPont Theater. Why don't you tell me, Mr. Ewart, exactly what did happen? Well, sure. I'll admit I got mad. <laughs> On account of ten dollars? Well, ten bucks and him being so clumsy and dropping things. Oh, I don't actually believe you became mad about that, Mr. Ewart. Well, I guess not. I was angry before he came in. It was all on account of Tony, my other man. I just could have killed him for the way he behaved with Mr. Steuben. Mr. Steuben? Yeah, my best customer. There was something the matter with Tony. I noticed it right away. I'm sorry, Mr. Steuben. It's all right, a little soap in here never harmed anyone. He's a little absent-minded, newlyweds are like that. <laughs> eh, Tony? <laughs> yes, Mr. Steuben. Hey, you're rubbing the skin off. Take it easy, will you? I'm sorry, Mr. Steuben. What, are you in a hurry to get home to the little woman? She's working in Dr. Scott's office, started today. That's smart. Maybe be able to quit pretty soon and let the little woman take care of that. Ouch! You cut me, you butcher! It slipped. All this talking about my wife, it, it makes me nervous. Are you going to tell me when I should talk? Well, if you kept quiet, it wouldn't have happened. This is unheard of. It isn't enough that he butchers me. Don't you call me a butcher. Tony, don't yell at me. No, why not? I'll teach you to keep a civil tongue in your head. Tony, I'm sorry, Mr. Steuben. You're fired. You can send my shaving mug and my brush to my office, Mr. Hewitt. I'm not going to take my trade to a shop that harbors a, an anarchist. But I fired him, Mr. Steuben. It's not enough. He wants blood. Go ahead, cut my throat. Make him happy. Oh, shut up and get out of here, Tony. Go on. Get out. 
So he got out. Did you know where I can find him? Sure, right next door at the bar. He never drank before. I see. Well, thanks a lot, Mr. Hewitt. I just don't know what got into him. It's very simple. He was just throwing a rock. What? Nothing. Goodbye, Mr. Hewitt. What does Steuben expect? All this yak, yak, yak with a sharp razor on his face? Of course it slipped. Now, don't customers usually chat with you while you're shaving them? Yeah, but not about my wife. All this cute talk about newlyweds and the little woman. Hey, I want another drink. Here, yeah, take mine. Thanks. Women. Oh, skip it. What's the matter? You have a fight with her? You want to write about it? You want to put it in your paper? No, Tony. I told you why I want to know. Yeah, you think I hit you over the head? In a way, yes. You're crazy. Well, listen, I'll tell you all about it. We've been married for three months. Everything's fine. Okay. Only we lived with her parents. I don't make a lot of dough. Okay. Her mother couldn't stand me. Boy, what a dame. So we moved out. We bought a lot of furniture. Nothing down. That's all we had. So she got a job with this doctor. Started this morning. So what happens? I'm all alone in the shop, and who do I see walk in? Elsie. Hello, Tony. What are you doing here? Honey, what's wrong? I quit my job. You... You what? I couldn't stand it, Tony. Dr. Scott was so mean. He called me stupid. Oh, now, now, don't, honey. You tell me all about it. He didn't even say good morning to me when he came into the office. Nothing. He just barked at me that I should call some insurance company, and I got confused and called another one. And he said I was stupid. Well, honey, you know you're not. I'm sure he knows it, too. He didn't mean to say that. What I'm trying to tell you is... Oh, what's the use? I think I know what you're trying to tell me. That I shouldn't have quit. I didn't say that. It's just that we bought all that furniture. Why did you let me buy all that furniture? I did? It was you who wanted us to have our own apartment. Well, didn't you? Sure, but we could have lived with my folks for a while. With your mother driving me crazy? Are you kidding? She was driving you crazy, too. Only because I saw how you didn't like it's her. It's not that I like her or don't like her. It's her picking, picking, picking on me. And on you, too. She was not. She's just worried because you don't make enough money. Enough for what? We eat. We have shoes, don't we? Then why did you want me to get a job? So we could buy the furniture to have our own home. All right, so I got one. Just to make things easier for you. Easier for me? So that's it. You wanted to work for me. I didn't say that. You're twisting my words. And all because I refuse to be called stupid. You'd have me go back and be called more names, just so you can have your dirty old furniture. Oh, I hate you! Elsie, come back here. She didn't come back. I didn't run after her. Do you think I should have? Well, yes. If you had, you might not have cut Mr. Steuben. A lot of things might not have happened. But there's always that fateful moment when instead of a kiss, we use a fist. Still not too late, Tony. I guess could still work. Thanks for the story. Be seeing you. Hey, bartender, give me a cup of coffee. Come in. Dr. Scott? Oh, yes. Come in, please. I'm sorry to bust in on you like this. There's nobody out there. Oh, I'm sorry my girl quit on me this morning. Oh. I'm Bob Lawrence. Oh, how do you do, Mr. Lawrence? Won't you sit down, please? Oh, thank you. I'm not a patient, though. I'm from the Lakeside Herald. Well, what can I do for you? Well, uh, did you hear about the fight they had today over on Elmwood Street? Fight? Oh, yes. As a matter of fact, I read about it in your paper. Oh, you're the reporter who got hit. Yes. And would it surprise you if I were to tell you that, in a way, you were responsible for it? Me? Well, I don't even know where Elmwood Street is. Well, you don't have to prove your innocence, Doctor. I didn't mean that you were legally responsible. Morally? Could be. You see, Doctor, there's no doubt that you're a link in a chain of events that led to that fight. I've been rolling it backwards, a sort of private sociological study. That's how I got here. Are you sure you're on the right track? Yes, if you're the one who bawled out a young girl called Elsie this morning. Oh, yes, that was my new receptionist. Yes, I do admit I did behave rather badly. It was really uncalled for. 
But had I known the young woman was going to react so sensitively... But you see, I was upset. Oh, so you had reacted to something sensitively. Well, you would have too. Did you happen to see that new cream-colored convertible on your way in? Yes, I did. Well, I just bought it last week. And this morning, at 7th and Main, a car hit me from behind. And on top of that, the fellow started bawling me out, said I'd stop too suddenly. What else could I have done? The girl must have been deaf or something. Oh, what girl? The one who stepped in front of my car like a darn fool. I honked, I yelled, but no, all she wanted to do was be killed. She's responsible for everything, if you ask me. Well, what makes you say that? Well, now that I come to think of it, she must have been mad about something. Her face was set, her eyes stared straight ahead. So I jammed on the brakes, bang. Could have killed that girl and the little dog. Little dog? Oh, she was carrying a puppy. And you know, I knew she must have been upset. How? She was carrying that puppy under her arm, hind end first. <laughs> There's a lot I want to tell you, but first I want you to read this. What is it? Well, it's my notes on the search for the culprit. It's all over. I found the hand that threw the rock. Well, go ahead and read it. It's short. Perhaps we have a hand in all the flying rocks that hit us. If that's true, my whole life has been a mistake. Sit tight, let things take care of themselves. Don't make any decisions and you won't get hurt. But you did get hurt. And so did you and so did a lot of other people. I know it sounds cockeyed, but you can't play it safe. Refusal to say yes turns into a big no. Refusal to love turns into hurt. Hurt into hatred and hatred into rocks. The rock that hits the innocent bystander just doesn't come from nowhere, and the innocent bystander is never quite innocent. Yes, darling. Sounds rather frightening, doesn't it? A little. Well, I guess I'd better start practicing. Practicing what? Committing myself. I love you. I don't believe it. I think it's from being hit over the head. Well, it is, darling. Of course it is. This was a Don W. Sharp, Warren Lewis production. In-law trouble was never so funny as when a foxy old father matches wits with his son's new bride in Woman's Work, next week on DuPont Theater, starring Walter Brennan and Mary Murphy. Brought to you by the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware, makers of better things for better living through chemistry.